Call the Tuesday, February 2nd meeting of the San Jose County Board of Commissioners to order. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Remain standing for a prayer. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, with liberty and justice for all. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you today asking for your guidance, wisdom, and support as we begin this meeting. Help us to engage in meaningful discussion. Allow us to grow closer as a group and nurture the bonds of our community. Fill us to your grace, Lord God, as we make decisions that will affect our citizens. Please continue to remind us that all that we accomplish is for the greater glory of you and for the service of humanity. We also pray for everyone to be happy and healthy. We ask these things in your name. Amen. Um, before we move forward, <coughs> if I could, uh, as for a brief moment of silence, Chuck Hurley passed away last week and he was, did a lot of things for our community from chief of police in South Bend to the coroner um, head of security and police at, uh, at Notre Dame as well. And uh, also my freshman year football coach. So I think Chuck really left an indelible, had an indelible impact on our community. And I, I just uh, please keep the entire Hurley family in our thoughts and prayers. Thank you. First order of business, opening and reading of bids, infrastructure, planning and growth. Good morning, Jessica Clark, County Engineer for the Department of Infrastructure, Planning and Growth on the 7th and 11th floors. We have a quotation for the installation of striping and pavement markings at county maintained roundabouts. We received two quotes. Uh, the first quote from ANA Safety in the base quote amount of $297,446.50. And from the air marking company, base quote, $155,508.05. Were there any quotes submitted that were not read aloud? Hearing none, we ask that the board physically accept the opening of these quotes, turn them over to our department for review and recommendation at a later date. Any questions or comments from the board? Is there a motion? Motion to accept these quotations. Second. Motion is second. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Motion passes. Thank you, Jess. Moving on to reports and requests. Um, just a, a reminder, it's, it's awesome that um, we've got so many people able to join us remotely. If you could please mute your microphones because sometimes we have unintended feedback here at, at the meeting and for those folks listening online as well. All right, moving on to the accounts payable docket. Is there a motion? Motion to approve. Second. The motion is second. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Next, thankfully, we were able to return to uh, the St. Joe County Employee of the Month. This was supposed to happen almost a year ago, but then the COVID kind of uh, just shut everything down. Um, Sheriff, do you want to come up and say a couple of words about... Then Commissioner Fleming is also gonna say a couple of words, but kind of set the stage for us, please. All right, good morning, Sheriff William Redmond, office is located at the jail, 401 West Sample Street in South Bend. Um, as you mentioned, Commissioner, we uh, acknowledge Joe Mason. He's our cleaning staff at uh, the jail. He's assigned to us. He came in shortly after I took office and uh, he grabbed our attention immediately. Uh, he is, even though he's part-time employee, he does full-time work for us. He goes above and beyond, uh, assists us in uh, all aspects of what we ask him to do. Uh, so we can't be more pleased than his work. And then on top of that, we did nominate him, as you mentioned, prior to COVID. Um, so you can just imagine the uh, difficulties and uh, challenges that we had uh, maintaining the jail on a day-to-day -day basis. And not only that, but to have Joe come in and still continue to do his work and make sure that uh, the jail was uh, sanitized and cleaned efficiently. So without a doubt, I would like to again 
uh, thank Joe for all his work and services to our staff and our uh, jail and everything he's done for the county. And so we again recommend that Joe be named as employee of the month. Thank you, thank Sheriff. You. Commissioner yeah. Fleming. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So on February of 2021, be it known that on this second day of February, the Board of Commissioners of St. Joseph County in the city of South Bend hereby confer that this award upon Joe Mason in recognition of his into initiative and de dedication to being the jail clean. So we're glad that he's able to do that. And we're happy for all of his services and help. And especially this past year, oh my gosh, thank you so much for all the work that you did. So we're happy that you are now employee of the month. Thank you, here we go. You want to get a picture now with him? Should we come around here a little bit? There you go, hon. This is for you. And this is for you. Yep, right there. Really <laughs> All right, congratulations. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I want to comment on Joe real quick. Hey, wait a minute before you leave, young man. <laughs> Again, I would like to congratulate you. Uh, thank Sheriff Redmond for the. Uh, nomination but i've known joe since he's been running around on the northwest side for a long time when he was selling elephant ears and doing all kinds of other stuff always been a great worker always been an asset uh, to the west side near west side of south bend so appreciate the good work buddy keep it up man thank you thank you, you too. too take care Next, First Amendment to Agreement for Assumption of Madison Center, Inc. Mr. Augustino, are you on? Yes, this is Pete Augustino. Good morning, commissioners. Good morning. Uh, before you, uh, Peter Augustino, office is at 131 South Taylor Street in South Bend. Before you is an amendment to an agreement that... Uh, has a 30 plus year history through different uh, variations. But basically this is a go forward ag agreement for distribution of the mental health levy fund uh, that comes in off property tax dollars uh, every year. Uh, for this year, that amount is $3,177,000. It goes up every year by a growth rate quotient determined by the Department of Local Government Finance. The proposed distribution on a go forward basis is set forth in the agreement. Uh, Oaklawn, as the uh, uh, designated community health uh, provider, gets the bulk of the money that uh, comes in off this fund. Uh, part of the money uh, that Oaklawn gets is allocated to the uh, risk that they do at the county jail uh, with the inmates, and a portion goes for uh, uh, psychiatric screenings that they do at the request of various county departments and judges for which they had not been compensated. A portion is retained by the county for the psychotropic drugs used at the inmates and the balance, which we've set at a flat amount that increases every year for a Memorial, which provides the inpatient service through Ep Epworth uh, at $800,000. So the benefit of this agreement, it's a five-year agreement now with one-year renewals after that, but the benefit of it is that it brings our uh, distributions in these categories uh, in line with the uh, uh, levy um, that comes in. So I'll be glad to answer any questions. I appreciate the good work from Steve Dalton and, and, and John Murphy in particular uh, helping us through this as well. I do want to also add my thanks to both yourself, Mr. Murphy, and Mike Hammond's office, and Steve Dalton, because this has been a has long been a vexing issue for the county. So I'm glad we're getting a better handle on this and still providing the level of care that we need to. Are there, are there any questions or comments? 
Yeah, uh, Pete, do you know how many patients this has served in the past? Uh, I don't have those statistics uh, uh, on hand. Uh, we could certainly get a report to you, but um, it's, you know, I think we could probably get a better handle on the uh, inpatient services at Epworth. Uh, the outpatient services that Oakland provides, I mean, that number is very, very, very large. So is it 50, 200, 500? Oh, I, I, would, I would certainly say that the outpatient services is thousands and thousands. Yeah. Uh, and and uh, the inpatient uh, service level, I'm going to say, is probably in the, I, I mean, on an annual basis in the hundreds for sure. All um, right. Uh, but uh, um, that, that's a different type of uh, animal on the inpatient service because of the uh, limitations on uh, based on facilities and care needs and uh, in terms of the, the uh, config, physical a aspects of rooms, uh, staffing requirements, that type of thing, based on the needs of individuals. So, All right. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? <clears throat> Is there a motion? Motion to approve this uh, First Amendment for the agreement of the assumption of Madison Center Incorporated. Second. We have motion to second. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Next, archives request approval of contract with Arrow Pest Control. Hello, good morning. Katrina Carter, St. Joseph County Archives and Records Center, 1140 South Lafayette Boulevard. Um, I'm asking to change pest control services because our current vendor is not meeting our needs, plus they keep increasing the costs like every six months. So... Um, I've had Arrow come out and walk through and submit a bid, and um, I've submitted that to you. Any questions or comments? Counselor? The one year proposal for 1388 bucks. So. With your approval? Yes, sir. Yeah. Is there a motion? Yes, a motion to approve this contract with the Arrow Pest Control for Portage Manor. Archives. 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 Oh, we have a motion oh, to second. Oh. All those in favor, oh, please signify I'm sorry. by from saying from aye. Aye. Opposed? It's from motion passes. All right, moving on to the health department, the craft's approval of contract with InFocus. Good morning, Amy Rupi, administrator with the Department of Health, offices on the eighth and ninth floor of the County City Building. Before you is a contract with InFocus to have them come on board as our data analytics specialist, which we did receive funding from through an anonymous donor. The contract would last January 1st through December 31st of 2021. Any questions, comments? Is there a motion? Motion to approve this contract within focus. Second. Motion to second. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Thank you to the anonymous donor to help us uh, continue to move the health department forward. All right. Infrastructure planning and growth, folks. We got a lot of action going on today. First being the consent agenda. There's an irrevocable letter of credit in Vernus Woods subdivision and request approval of traffic regulatory ordinances, ordinances for a no trucks exclusion. Any questions or comments regarding any or either of these items? Is there a motion? Motion to approve this consent agenda. Second. Good motion to second. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Request for, request for proposals, county comprehensive plan. It's Abby. Good morning. Abby Wiles, Director of Area Plan Commission, Department of Infrastructure Planning and Growth with offices on the 7th and 11th floor. Before you today is a request to release the request for proposals or RFP for the county comprehensive plan. Um, as noted in the cover letter, our current plan dates back to 2002. 
and it had a uh, robust public participation process, we envision the exact same thing for the new plan. Um, we are requesting to release the RFP. It will be posted on American Planning Association's website, the Indiana Chapters website, of course, on the county bid page and advertised in local newspapers. Uh, it would follow the timeline outlined in the RFP on page seven in that we would release it today. Deadline for questions would be two weeks from today. Uh, response is provided February 23rd. And then we would uh, request proposals to be due back to you March 16th. Then we would go through a selection process where uh, we'd have a committee review proposals and then make a recommendation to the Board of Commissioners. Uh, this RFP has been before the Area Plan Commission. Uh, it was included in their meeting packet from last month, and it was before the County Council last Tuesday and have received very positive feedback. So happy to answer any questions and just requesting your permission to release today. Thank you, Abby. And I, I just want to add, uh, this has been a long time coming. One of the issues we've had, anyway, I don't want to go into former administrations and area plan, but this is something that I'm, I'm very excited to see. Thank you for leading the way with this. Um, it's also, I mean, we're anticipating it to be on the higher end of what the cost would be because we want to make sure it's done right. We want to make sure we get plenty of community input. We want to make sure that we check all the boxes. And that's why I think you've seen approval from council and area plan as well, because it's just, it's the right way to do things. So I, I'm looking forward to um, us moving forward with that. Are there any questions or comments from the board? Yeah, I've got uh, a couple. Under uh, number six, scope of work. Under C, public and strategy and outreach program. Like from my perspective of, of running and all that and talking to people, Olive Township, New Carlisle and, and the sort, um, the feedback that I got from people that there was not a lot of good communication and so on as part of this paragraph under C, how, how do you guys propose or what are you looking at as far as um, public engagement and outreach? So public engagement and outreach uh, is going to be key in this whole process. At this time, we don't have a proposed public outreach program or outreach uh, program for this. We're asking the consultant to provide that as part of their proposal. And we're giving it so much weight, or we're giving it weight in the selection of a consultant, so much so that we've devoted 25 points of the overall score out of 100. So 25% alone to the proposed public engagement strategy. So what we're asking for from consultants that submit proposals is tell us what uh, you would propose to do for public outreach, especially in light of COVID and some of the, um, I'll say, uh, public discourse we've had about different land use issues throughout the county. So okay. we hope to get um, innovative proposals back that are at the cutting edge for public outreach. I mean, we all know, we've all taken the survey monkey, right? Surveys, take right. the survey. <laughs> we've all done Zoom meetings, uh, but I, I have to think that in light of everything that's happened over the last year, that there has, there there's going to be other innovative ways to do public engagement. And I'm really hopeful that we'll get some proposals back that are innovative. Okay. So one, once this document is completed, is there further in, input? Let's say if, if the commissioners say, hey, you guys should add this or whatever, because the I know it's going to be a pretty exorbitant cost, which is fine. But at the end of the day, when I was on the city council, we went through a vigorous long year city plan, which now sits on a desk somewhere, a closet. I just wanna make sure once you're all done with this, that it's a document that's going to be used and adhered to, and yes. just the parameters for the citizens they, that they have can confidence of something that hasn't been updated in 20 years. That now we've got that as, as Andy alluded to. Yeah, and to that point, I would say, um, I would even, say we use our 2002 comprehensive plan a great deal. I mean, we use it in preparing our petitions for, or our staff reports for rezoning petitions. We use it when we're looking at BZA requests. We use it when we're looking at other long range planning um, situations. 
So I think absolutely it will be used and I think it'll be more effective because it'll reflect the current conditions. Okay, cool, thank you. And I, I would just like to say too that I'm so appreciative that you're moving forward with this finally. It's been a long time since we updated and it's finally time that we update things and do the best things that we can for our county. Thank you so much. Thank you. There are no more questions or comments. Is there a motion? Yeah, a motion to approve this request for proposals for the county comprehensive plan. Second. We have a motion to second. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes and um, happy birthday, Miss <laughs> Abby. Thank you. I, I mean, I think Mike Hammond says during public comments, he's going to lead a roaring rendition of happy birthday, but we'll. we'll I can uh, sing happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. All right. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to hear this. Next up, request <laughs> approval of RNS 91901 miscellaneous resurfacing rehabilitation in County Subdivision District 1, 2, and 3, change order number one. Jessica Clark, County Engineer, Department of Infrastructure Planning and Growth on offices in the 7th and 11th floors of this building. If uh, at the pleasure of the board, items C, D, and E are all the same project, and I can cover all three in one explanation if, if that is your pleasure. Counselor, you okay with that? Perfect. The first request is for change order number one. That was an increase to the contract of $59,445.02. The second request is actually the final change order that balances all the contract items is an, and is an overall decrease of $115,351.54 to the project to revise the final contract amount to $3,035,698.37. And the final item is the project completion affidavit that establishes that final project cost, initiates our maintenance period with the contractor, identifies Reith Riley as the contractor that finalized the work, and we would request your approval of all three documents. Any questions or comments? Is there a motion? A motion to approve these three change orders that she requested. Second. We have a motion to second. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Next request approval of interlocal agreement for the Cedar Street Bridge over the St. Joseph River sidewalk and trail reconstruction project and property donation. Yes, this agreement uh, between the city of Mishawaka and St. Joseph County outlines each party's responsibilities in reference to the city of Mishawaka's federal aid project. It's part of the Riverwalk Trail expansion, and they're doing work in and around our bridge over the river on Cedar Street. As part of the project, there is adjustments that they need to make to our structure. Plus, there is other work that is necessary in the same time frame of the structure. So a, a portion of the project will be eligible for that 80% federal aid. The remaining bridge items that are necessary to be done on, on our side is going to be 100% local uh, for St. Joseph County. So this agreement identifies at this point in time, the amount uh, for the county share is going to be $282,500. We strongly recommend partnering with Mishawaka on this project. It is beneficial for both parties and convenient to construct both these projects concurrently and utilizing that federal aid benefit. Any questions or comments? Is there a motion? A motion to approve this interlocal agreement for the Cedar Street Bridge. Second. Motion to second. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Next request approval of engineering services proposal as needed agreement. Yes, this proposal is with Lock Mueller Group for an as needed agreement for work performed to not exceed 100,000. Uh, as with our other as needed agreements, we typically utilize consultant services for various aspects of our engineering work and public works. Uh, we identify basically subtasks that identify the scope for that specific work element at the time. And we utilize various as needed agreements with area consultants. Any questions or comments? Is there a motion? A motion to approve the engineering services proposal with Lockmuller Group. Second. Motion to second. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. 
Next, request approval of right-of-way services agreement, Pierce Road Corridor from US 31 to Miami Highway Federal Aid Project. This is the right-of-way service agreement for this corridor project. It is covered through federal aid at an 80-20% ratio. This amount is not to exceed 300,000. And these are for the services to provide the legal descriptions, the right-of-way engineering necessary, and any buying and relocation services for any right-of-way acquisition related to this project. Any questions or comments? Is there a motion? Motion to approve the service agreement for the Pierce Road Corridor Federal Aid Project. Second. Motion to second. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Moving on to bid request for St. Joseph County Highway 2021 annual bids, drainage pipe and structures, guardrail and bridge materials, traffic paint and signage materials, miscellaneous aggregates, liquid bituminous materials, fuel oils, lubricants, and miscellaneous materials, bituminous patching materials. As before you for all of these various annual highway materials is the no spitters and special provisions for our annual bids. We request your approval to advertise these projects on Friday, February 5th and February 12th with a bid opening for March the 2nd. Any questions or comments? I guess the question, Jess, do we have, given the state of everything, mm -hmm. do we anticipate pricing to come back more favorable to the county or less? I, I don't, if you even have an idea. Yeah, I, I haven't really seen much price escalation uh, we did receive pretty favorable bids on some of our recent federal aid projects, but those are large contracts. So I, I haven't heard such, uh, but we will see what we get. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Any other questions or comments? Is there a motion? A motion to approve the advertising and bid request for this annual material bid. Second. A motion to second. All those in favor, please signify, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. Ne next, request approval of resolution R1C2021 authorizing purchase of real property. Good morning, commissioners. Chris Brown, Economic Development Specialist, Department of Infrastructure Planning and Growth, offices on the 7th and 11th floors. Uh, at the pleasure of the board, I would request that both uh, the next two items be heard kind of in that same vein. They're both kind of the same program. So also resolution R2C2021 as well. Okay. Uh, so these are the final approvals for uh, the purchase of real property for the FEMA home buyout program. Uh, this was a program we won federal funds for back in 2020 that we were awarded. And so we are at a at a step right now to uh, actually enter into agreements with the property owners that have voluntarily participated in purchasing their homes. So uh, there are six properties for the pre-disaster mitigation grant, and then there are two properties for the hazard mitigation grant program. Uh, these are funded at a 75-25 uh, federal local ratio, and uh, the funds have been appropriated. So I would ask your approval to enter into these agreements. Thank you so much. This has been a great project, a very long and arduous project as well. But um, yourself, Bill Shaliel, Jessica Clark, you know, the, the entirety of infrastructure planning and growth. Um, it's great that we can get even closer to bringing this project to fruition and giving some assistance to, to those residents um, in, in that very unfortunate geographical area from a flooding standpoint. Are there any other questions or comments? Can we do them both the same? Hearing none, is there a motion? Motion to approve resolution R-1-C-2021 and R-2-C-2021 for authorizing purchase of the real property. Second. Motion to second. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Moving on so, to old business. Seeing none. Public comments. I will lead that it saddens me that this is our last Board of Commissioner meeting with Jessica Clark serving as County Engineer. And I assume she'll be back and we'll have a bit more formal a farewell um, that will hopefully make her cry. <laughs> I will God, cry. Because gosh knows I will be 
crying, but um, it will be in my entire term as an elected official, either back when I was on the council and, and Jessica was the intern in engineering um, through uh, my entirety as a, a member of the board of commissioners, I can't think of anyone more critical and instrumental to the great things that have happened in St. Joe County than Jessica Clark. So once again, we'll, we'll wax more nostalgic on this at a later point in time, but um, how dare you, Miss Clark, how dare you? All right, after that knife stab in the back, are there any other public comments? Yes, Dan Mr. Caruso. Yep. 305 Compton Street, New Carlisle. Uh, I too wish um, Ms. Clark uh, uh, happy whatever you move on to. Uh, it's, it's been a, a, a pleasure uh, working with you. Um, enjoy, enjoy the rest of whatever you do. Um, I would also like to uh, thank Commissioner Dieter uh, for uh, bringing up uh, some of the things that uh, uh, those of us over in the, the Western County um, gave him our vote uh, for, for looking out for us, um, uh, trying to get us a voice, which uh, at the last redevelopment commission meeting, there was a statement made that, that the people of, of New Carlisle were behind uh, the move that was going on here. And I can tell you for certain, I am not behind it. And some of the people I voted for uh, indicated they're behind it, but we don't know what went on behind the scenes. Uh, so I, they're my friends and neighbors, so I'll give, I'll give them the benefit of the doubt. But make no mistake that I am a majority, I am in the majority over here of people who have not uh, appreciated the way this whole thing has been handled with zero to little to zero input from the citizens and then going with our five elected officials behind closed doors, coming to an agreement that nobody is, is privy to except for those people who, who participated in that process. And uh, I, I feel that Commissioner Dieter has hit the nail on the head that we have got to have full participation of the farmers, of the citizens of the town, of the small businesses in the town that will be affected by any growth out here. It needs to be a complete, open, transparent process uh, to, to come up with new comprehensive land use plan. And everyone, the environment, everybody has to be considered, not just a few who sit behind closed doors and, and think they speak for all of us. Thank you and everybody be safe. I will add or comment on Mr. Caruso's comment. That's exactly what we're doing with this comprehensive plan. That's why um, Abby has weighed that as important as anything is because we need to do a better job of making sure that we get input from everyone during this comprehensive plan, because this is the plan that we are all going to live with for the next, hopefully 10 years. Hopefully it won't be 20 years before it gets redone again. But that's why input from everyone is going to be critical. So, Dan, I, I do, could not agree with you more. And this will be um, a, a focus of this new plan. So you, you have the word of all of us sitting up here that that's going to take place. Any other public comments? This is uh, Peter Augustino with offices at 131 South Taylor Street. Uh, and I want to say something that I could not say 30 years ago. And that is that after uh, dealing with public servants for over 30 years plus, that uh, Jessica Clark is by far one of the most remarkable shining stars in public service. And it was an honor to work with her and I wish her the best. And I just wanna just acknowledge what a great public servant she's been for St. Joseph County. Thank you. Thank you, Peter J. Any other public comments? I would like to um, offer public comment briefly um, uh, regarding the um, the RFP please, for the Please company. state your name and address for the record, Mr. Cobb. My, my name is Chris Cobb. I live at 215 East Pokagan Street, South Bend, Indiana. Uh, I'm very appreciative uh, of, the, um, of the composition of the RFP. Um, 
I think that the stress on um, on public participation that's been visible throughout the process um, has been has been excellent, and I think it will lead to a a welcome change. I, I do want in the um, in the spirit of a friendly amendment to uh, to indicate that I think in the uh, environmental section of the um, of the RFP. Uh, and I don't know whether any change will be made before it's posted later today, but I want to bring it up that um, there is um, in section, um, this is section 6D5 um, on the environment. Uh, there's, no in, there's no mention of climate change in that and that uh, I think that it would be prudent for uh, for the RFP to include climate change in environmental considerations. Um, that's going to be, it's a serious issue now and it's only gonna become a more serious issue over the next 10 or 20 years. So I think the county would be uh, ill served if we were to enter into a planning process that was not, um, that was not explicitly and carefully concerned with both uh, climate change mitigation and climate change resilience as part of the county's planning for land use. So I'd like to bring that to the attention of uh, the commissioners and, uh, and uh, Ms. Wiles, who's overseeing the RFP. Um, also in the matter of public participation, um, there are two elements in the RFP that it would be good for the public to know more about and for there to be clarity about. Those are one, um, the composition and process of the selection committee uh, that will be bringing a recommendation to the board of commissioners. Um, some things about their criteria are in the are in the document, but who they are and how, how they're going to proceed has not yet been defined. And transparency, uh, in the interest of transparency, the public should be informed about that. Uh, in addition, there is in the RFP an indication that there's going to be a steering committee. Uh, that's going to guide the process on the side of the St. Joseph County government. Uh, but there's no indication of who's going to be on that steering committee, whether there will be um, non-governmental uh, representatives involved from various communities. The steering committee for the IEC has been a flashpoint uh, in terms of its uh, failure to include a member of the county council, uh, the question of how uh, citizens from the area are being represented. So I think that steering committee uh, needs to be clearly and appropriately defined at an early stage in the process so that it can serve uh, the goals of public participation and transparency rather than uh, becoming a, a point of confusion and, uh, and conflict. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chris. Any other public comments? Hello, this is Bob Humbarger at uh, 29987 Herb Road, Olive Township. Can you hear me? Yes. Great. Um, in general, the RFP writers should be committed on a well-written RFP and uh, calling for public input, as uh, Mr. Dieter just stated this morning. It, it was great. The phrase calling for innovative and robust public engagement strategies does appear at least four times in the RFP, but it would be much better if it had some specifics. The request could refer to the 2002 comp plan public input as a minimum guideline. Um, as you know, during the process of the 2002 uh, uh, County Land Use Plan, they had 12 public meetings, seven focus groups, and after each presentation, the attendees were then broken up into small groups for their input. Plus, there was a public electronic participation and a series of public meetings as the plan was being, um, uh, being drafted. The uh, 2021 update should have at least as much public input as the 2002 plan, and I think that's your intent. But we just need some specifics in the language to, that that has to be a, a minimum of uh, what the 2002 comp plan was. And also, uh, during development of the 2002 plan, changes were made to reflect public comment 
Um, there have not been any changes made to reflect public comments that I can see in the last few years. So um, that would be uh, something that I think should be included in the RFP. And thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Bob. Any other public comments? Yes, please. I'd like to make a comment. Uh, my name is uh, Elias Krim. Uh, I live at 909 Portage Avenue, and I better say I'm a rel relatively new resident of St. Joseph County. I've been here about six months. Um, I chose to move over here because I'm just very struck by the, uh, the sort of creativity and the dynamism of uh, public conversation around uh, South Bend. I come from Porter County, and one of my hopes for the way this RFP is structured is that uh, it will offer a, a new way of looking at uh, a new conversation about economic development. Uh, where I came from, this was kind of a one-dimensional station. It didn't seem to be very open to new ideas. It didn't seem to be open to learning from history. So I'm hoping that this conversation will be one in which the whole subject of how we do uh, economic development, the sort of debate between economic hunting and economic gardening can be kind of foregrounded because I think we live in a region here where the ability to develop uh, with a more uh, immediate focus on the local population, local businesses and local enterprises uh, can be emphasized. So I'm just appreciative of the atmosphere in which this is going forward. And I hope that uh, South Bend's reputation as a place of real creativity and public thinking uh, will be demonstrated um, in this process. So thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Any other public comments? Uh, yes, please. My name is Chuck Buter, 16210 Oak Hill Boulevard in Granger. And uh, you know, much as, uh, the previous speaker just spoke of having just moved in. I moved in 20 years ago when this was last addressed, this uh, planning. And much has changed in the, in the 20 years, and so the new plan has to uh, adjust accordingly. I want to also say I appreciate the acknowledgement that COVID-19 has uh, yielded less than full public participation in some of these uh, recent government decisions. So I appreciate how you're heavily weighing public engagement and outreach um, with your 25 out of 100 points. I also want to concur with an earlier speaker. There was a Mr. Cobb who spoke about um, environmental considerations. And the one thing I want to mention is that this RFP does lack explicit requirement that issues relating um, to climate change uh, be addressed in the plan. This is, you know, climate change wasn't a big part of the dialogue back then, but our world and our literally world has changed so much that it needs to be explicit. Um, the uh, language should include the attention to that, both that yeah, was mentioned, I believe, mitigation and resilience. And I just want to cite one example how this is you know, a bipartisan issue. There's a, an act called the Growing Climate Solution Act that's been proposed. And the co-sponsors are Senators Mike Braun of Indiana and Debbie Stabenow of Michigan. And these two recognize that they've gotten together to facilitate expanded business opportunities for farmers with the Growing Climate Solutions Act. Um, and it puts an emphasis on some of the growth being on the farmland itself because farming is gonna have a new role in um, our nation's well-being, such as um, conservation easements and carbon sequestration and everything. So climate, you know, we can say environment, but I really would request that we uh, explicitly note uh, the role and the need to address climate change. And lastly, I want to thank Jessica Clark. Um, Jessica Clark, uh, I've been advocating for uh, dark sky issues in our region for a while. And as um, the engineer responsible for roads, Jessica. Uh, you have 30 seconds, sir. Jessica accepted and responded to public input on using fully shielded lights in county road projects. Um, and the finest example, if you look at like the uh, fur road roundabout, that's excellent lighting. Jessica, thank you very much for your work in um, 
your uh, designing and doing the roads so that they advocate for dark skies. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Any other public comments? Hearing none, a motion to recess is in order. Second. We have motion to second. Those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Tough luck. We are recessed. <laughs>